What's up everyone? Welcome to another video. This is going to be my biggest community challenge yet. I'm going to be playing as a player of every rank, starting at Grandmaster, working my way all the way down to Bronze. Every game they'll be able to veto an additional unit. This is going to be a best of seven. If they win the best of seven, I will have to pay them all $100. Let's begin. All right, the first game of the day is against Yoru, a Grandmaster random player on the North American server. I thought he was 5k MMR, but he said he was actually 5.3k MMR. So even better than I thought. Uh, it's actually a nice good... It always makes me happy when I see the good luck I found with the heart. It just cheers me up a little bit, you know? So the unit he vetoed, which was very surprising to me, I wonder if it's surprising to you guys as well, was the tank. Now, I would have bet, like, I was 90% sure that the first two vetoes would have been the Marine and the Reaper because they just seem like such all-around units. Like, Reapers are super good early on. Marines are good throughout the entirety of the game. Maybe not when there's a million Colossus out or whatever. But besides that, obviously a very useful unit. But they did veto the tank. So I have to imagine there's going to be some kind of cheese. But my opponent is random. Now, I would truly think that it was genius. If my opponent took the time to prepare like a really sick cheese with every race, that is especially good if you're not gonna make tanks, right? Now, that is a lot of effort. Now, one thing that I really like about this challenge that I did here is that uh, I announced it a while in advance, so they all had time to plan out their strategies. And this part I think is very important because this is gonna be a best of seven, right? They have to win the best of seven, so at least four maps to get paid the full amount. And I feel like they really needed to do some strategizing to have a good shot here. Because I think, let's say you put me on the Grandmaster ladder, right? And you tell me I'm not allowed to make tanks and my opponent doesn't know. I am pretty sure that I'm gonna win that game. But if you're gonna have like a week to prepare, like you do specific vetoes and then do specific strategies to counter that, then all of a sudden, I'm not gonna be so happy anymore, right? So it's really gonna depend on how well they strategize, especially when we go lower into leagues. Like I think by the time I get to the bronze player, I think I'll have three units left, I believe. So we're gonna have to see what they have prepared. Like if they helped each other, like if, oh, he's Terry. If they helped each other and they prepared something really nice for uh, a bronze player to, let's say, only make stalkers because I only have medevacs and ravens and SEVs left, right? Something like that, then uh, that could actually be very scary. But if it's just the bronze player who didn't strategize and is just going to play normal, even if I only have SEVs and the ravens, I'm probably going to be winning that game, right? So it's going to be a lot about their teamwork and their strategies. They did ask me if they were allowed to coach each other during a game. Uh, and I said yes, because I think... You could say a bronze being coached by a grandmaster, that that's, makes them way better. But I've done a lot of coaching in the past. And I know that live coaching is very hard and very stressful. Like, if you're going to get coached live, it's it's really not that easy, you know? Like, it's very stressful of you to be like, no, uh, make a depot, man. Come on, make a, make another command center. What are you doing? <laughs> you know? like, it's actually very stressful. So I, I thought it would be cool to allow them to do that. I'm sure they're all in voice chat right now, uh, streaming to each other. And that's going to make this even more exciting. Now we're playing against a Terran, and I'm not allowed to make tanks. This is probably the worst race uh, he could have gotten for me, because tanks are absolutely essential for TVT late game. So all of a sudden, this kind of looks like a genius veto. I mean, I was surprised, but it does kind of feel like a genius veto now. Um, what do I need to change so I don't have to go for tanks? That's actually a pretty good question. Um, I, th I think I should maybe go for like a Cyclone-based playstyle. And then just transition into like mass bio before, you know, the tanks are already in my face, basically. Like I can use the Cyclones for map control and then hopefully I can prevent him from sieging in my face. That sounds like the best idea to go about it, or the best way to go about it. So this is going to be an initial trade, traded one Hellion for one Hellion, nothing too special. This, this could be a bad build order for me if he went for the reactor earlier than I did. If he got a reactor faster, that means that he... Uh, it's just like a little bit ahead. Like nothing too crazy, but a little bit ahead. So I'm going to get the Raven upgrade and I'm going to start making a bunch of Cyclones. Now, sadly for me, this playstyle was actually nerfed in the last patch. So before the last patch, this would have been a lot better than it is now. So now it's actually a little bit scary, especially if I'm going to have to go up against tanks later. I if I was my opponent now, what I would do is I would go for a very passive playstyle, but not just for like five minutes but pretty much for the entire game because tanks are always gonna win against non-tank composition tvt doesn't matter if you're playing bio or mech right like tanks are just better but if you're gonna move out at lower supply counts then that's gonna give me the opportunity to outplay and stuff so that's not really what you want so he's uh, is chilling at home with these reapers let me just check okay so he did make a tank first all right that's what i like to see i mean not for me 
But I do like to see that for him because that sounds like uh, the way he wants to play. So I'm going to get a bunch of Cyclones. I could go for Mech. Yes. No, that's too bad, right? Without tanks. Like if I'm going to make Cyclones with the mine stores only, that does sound a little bit too bad. I made sure to unhotkey my tank if I didn't mention that before. So I'm not going to make it on accident because I would. I mean, I would just autopilot a freaking tank out there like no problem, right? Now I want to move out with my Cyclones, but he does still have, I believe, three Reapers on the map. Which would make that a little scary. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go for Bio. I think I'm just going to steal this tech lab with my barracks. As soon as that Raven is finished building, I'll make two more barracks. And then hopefully I can get enough Marine Medivac out on the map before I get obliterated by a siege tank push. Wait, did I? Oh, I did hear something. I, I didn't see it on the minimap, but I heard it. And I was like, wait, this is am I, am I dying to something? I can't even see it. Maybe I should have picked different colors. I'm going to fly this over to the next base already. I didn't have that camera hotkey for some reason. That's slightly annoying. Uh, now, what, what do I even do with this factory? Like, it's, you know, I, I, I wanted to make a tech lab on it, but obviously that doesn't make a lot of sense. So why would I do that? Now, let's see. He has one tank there. Oh, no, it's actually more tanks, right? Yeah, I, I think he's playing the perfect style, to be honest. Like, this looks very, very scary to me. Maybe I could pick up some of these Reapers. That'd be nice. Can I get another one? Not quite. That's the downside of the new Cyclone is that the... Um, the lock-ons don't recharge instantly. So if you've locked onto a target, you're not going to be able to lock onto another one. Like, if you look at this army, guys, if he's going to push me, I don't really know what I'm supposed to do against it yet. I'm, I'm transitioning right now. Let's see, I'm going to do a scan just to see if he's, um, you know, going to be sieging or not periodically. I could make a couple Vikings. That's maybe not the worst idea. Let's try to get some lock-ons here. Oh, we got the one tank. Maybe you can get that one. That'd be massive. Let's see. One tank is... Yeah, okay. That is super nice. There we go. And I'm going to fly this away. I really don't know what the hell I'm supposed to do with this factory, to be honest. So I guess we're just going to, you know, put it on the sidelines for now. I guess I could make like hell bats or something like that. Like, I don't even know what I'm supposed to do with that. And I'm going to go forward one more time. The scan is still active. Oh, we might get the Raven. We are going to get the Raven as well. Okay, that's very nice. Let's see. I'm going to get a couple of the Marines. I do still have the Ravens alive. He sees one tank already. I do have three Ravens, guys. Like, I think there's definitely a chance for me to hold this, but it's going to be very, very scary. I think now we're at the time where I have to wait. I'm sure he's sieging his tanks over here. I could make a couple Liberators, too. Let's see. I just need to hide these Ravens forever, I think. But could I maybe... Wait. He has combat shield? What the hell is this kind of build? This build looks like something uh, insane that I would do in like a challenge video or something. Like this actually looks crazy. Does he have stim as well? If he has stim, I actually don't know what I'm supposed to do against it. Do I have stim? I'm going to get stim pretty soon, which is obviously quite nice. Okay, we're going to be able to kill a viking. I think we kind of have to go for it pretty soon already. Yeah, he does have stim as well. Like this this is pretty crazy, this build by him. I think we're going to pull the SUVs and I think we're just going to go for it here. I'm going to disable all of those tanks, I hope. The cyclones are going to be able to do a good job from the right side. Let's see, I need to land a couple of vikings on those tanks. That's the only way I'm going to be able to kill them. But it looks like I'm not going to be able to get through this, guys. So in the first game, I just tried to make a tank, by the way. You guys couldn't see it, but I tried to press the button for a tank. And that is going to be it for the first game. All right. And I really... I really want to applaud him because th this is awesome. I'm actually so excited, even though I lost, because I was kind of afraid that they would try to play like a way too normal game, vetoing one of my units. But going for a Marine tank call in with barely any SCVs, by the way, like this was really all in by him. I didn't really have an option to stop it. I think maybe if I went for more Cyclones, I could have maybe delayed it a bit longer. But once the tank siege, I really needed my Marine. So that is a big applause for Euro. I was pretty confident I was going to win this first game, but we did lose it, which I think is kind of awesome for the challenge to be honest, make sure you guys believe in the challenges a little more. Let's play against the Masters player. All right, the second game is against Jacob Gaycop, uh, a 4-6 Masters Protoss player. And the veto here was indeed the Marine. Now, I'm not quite sure if I have the right to scrutinize their vetoes anymore because that tank veto plus the strategy was freaking insane. Like, that was, I got destroyed harder than I would have imagined getting destroyed in that first game, to be honest. So, uh, But the Marine definitely is something that I would have expected. Now, this game, I was kind of waiting for this, is if I... I was thinking, if I play against the Protoss and I can't make Marines, if that's their veto, I can go for a Proxy Reaper. And I think this is where I want to pull out that cheese because I was kind of thinking, playing against a Masters player with two vetoes, 
uh, that would probably be one of the hardest ones. Like, for some reason in my mind, I felt like this was going to be a really hard one. But we did get a pretty good situation here. Because I have some really good cheeses where I don't need marines for and I don't need tanks. So, uh, that's going to be pretty nice. Now, one thing I don't think I've uh, said yet is that even if they lose the best of seven, I decided to give everyone who won their map uh, to still give them 50 bucks. Because I feel like, you know, they put a lot of time into this and they honestly deserve it. So, Yoru already secured himself 50 bucks. If his team wins he gets 100 else is gonna be 50 but uh definitely very happy that i can provide that for them because if they beat me with such a cool strategy they just deserve it you know that makes me happy as well now i was gonna say we haven't been probe scouted yet but there wait did he just paint that did he just put a spray on my ramp i feel like i should spray it back i'm gonna spray it back i didn't even know what spray i have i hope it's not something like bm let's see what it is I have no idea. Oh, I, what the hell is that? I don't even know what that is. Is that like a Terran symbol or something? Okay, so now he knows he's being proxy reaper. Uh, I'm going to try. Well, one thing I know is that masters players rather than GMs, they usually try to... Yeah, exactly. They don't go for the Nexus if they're being proxied. If you play against pros, they will usually still try um, to take the Nexus instantly. But here, they usually delay it a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to be able to block that with a bunker. I'm just going to run this SCV back home, I think. Uh, it's just going to be able to delay that for a while. I think I'm going to try to jump into the main. Let's see if he has walled that off. There, there is a base with a rich gas in the middle that he could take. So that's something that I need to pay attention to as well. And let's see how well he's going to be doing against this Reaper. He's going to lose one probe right away, at least if I micro properly. And then he's going to lose another one because that's way too hard to pull away. And we're going to be able to do a decent amount of damage until the Adept comes out. We're going to kill another one here. And then... Oh, actually, I did mess up my cheese a little bit. I think I was only supposed to go for one Reaper with this build. Oh, no, I'm going to lose it because it was trapped there. Uh, I was supposed to only go for one Reaper here so i did mess up my cheese a little bit but considering how much damage i've done already that feels quite nice now there's a zealot attacking that which means the stalker or adept is probably um in the main base wait there's two wait he actually followed it all the way home i didn't realize that but i think he actually followed it all the way home because there's two probes over here i might i might have to make a cyclone you know I think I actually have to make a Cyclone because he hasn't expanded yet. So that could mean that there's an Oracle. I'm going to be making Cyclones from that. Uh, or Marauders, rather. I'm going to cancel my SCV so I had enough supply for it. Now, this game is getting a little weird because he is supposed to have an expansion by now. But I don't see it. So do I continue with this big attack? He's going to go for a Twilight Count. So he's losing a lot of probes here, guys. Can we kill that one? I'm going to be able to kill that one. He does find my proxy. But the Marauder is about to pop out. Wait, he might not... Yeah, he's, he's struggling to target a little bit. He's actually going to lose a Stalker for that, I think, which is really good for me. There we go. The Stalker is going to fall. Uh, I'm going to make a Depot over here. Now, I do kind of have to win with this. Because if I don't... No, actually... No, I can't play Mech against Protoss. Because Cyclone Mech is actually pretty decent. And I'm saying that very carefully because it's not good. I don't want to trick you guys. It's not great, but it's decent. I don't necessarily need tanks to play like that. So that is probably what I would go for. These two stalkers are sentenced to death now, which is super good for me. There we go. Those two stalkers are going to die. Especially if he targets the Reaper, that's just going to heal up. So that's going to be even nicer. But we still have to try and finish this game with this attack. I think I just saw... Did I just see a warping animation? Yeah, I did. Okay, that's actually... Almost feels like I was cheating there. You guys saw that? Like, <laughs> you can see the warping animation from the low ground. Now, I need to keep... This is actually scary because I need to keep making stuff. Because if I don't, he's going to overwhelm me with Blink Stalkers. But I can't make tanks. Tanks is what I would be making here right now. So the Marine Veto not really coming into play yet with this. Well, it, it would as soon as I fly this barracks back home. But the tank veto is actually bothering me a little bit. Maybe that was the best veto after all. Now, this is something that you can do when you do builds like this. You can just start attacking from the low ground. That pylon's going to be depowered. Or those two gateways are going to be depowered, rather. And I suppose I'll just keep making Cyclones because what else am I going to make right now? I'm not even sure. Okay, let's see. I need to make sure these Cyclones are in the back. Okay, he's going to try to go for it. That's going to be painful for him. He doesn't have Blink yet. I think Blink is a really long upgrade. He does have a lot of gateways, but I think it's just smart for me to go for this right now. I do need to be careful for the potential battery. Oh, actually, he doesn't have energy. Oh, no, he doesn't have energy for the battery overcharge. I'm just going to be doing some Cyclone Micro so he can't pick those off. And it looks like we're going to bring the series back into 1-1. One, one. And that is nice because I was kind of thinking that we could go down 2-0 here considering playing as the Master player 
player with two vetoes. But there we go, we have done it. And it was mostly because I had a very good strategy here. And this map, I chose it specifically, it's loser's picks, which means that the diamond player will choose the next map. But this map has two freak, well, actually three, but these matter. It has two freaking Reaper clips on this side, so he wouldn't be able to wall it off. That's a massive part. Very happy to get a dub back. Let's go for game number three. Game three is going to be against Mozzarella, a Diamond Zerg player. And if you guys have been watching their channel for longer, you would know that he was the winner of the holdout challenge. He's also been the captain of his team, it seems like, recruiting everyone and strategizing. So he definitely seems to have a knack for these challenges. Now, his veto was the Reaper. So now this is when my builds are going to start being really awkward. I feel like until now, I kind of had some escapes. You know, if I can't make tanks, I can make cyclones. If there's no Marines, I can make Reapers. But now... I mean, if I want to make a barracks unit, I'll have to make a Marauder or a Ghost, which is, I mean, it's for not the best early game opener against Zerg. I'm definitely going to have to do some early scouting. I'm kind of leaning towards going for Cyclones. Ghosts are also not a bad option. I feel like if I went for Ghost, they would keep me safe. Now, before I forget, guys, after this game, things are going to get even spicier. I kind of tried out the vetoes with a friend before to see what the games would look like. And I decided to give the, all the players from now on, so Platinum, etc., they're all going to get two vetoes right so i'm really not gonna have any units to build and the bronze player is gonna get three vetoes so this is gonna get pretty insane mozzarella was the last player who just had one veto that's that's the punishment for being too good guys what can i say uh now he did pick a very sketchy map if you guys haven't seen this map before it's called dynasty you have a gold base in the back which or in the back that's safe but you can attack it from the back as well so if you get any kind of range unit that's already impossible to take uh and what's the weird part here is that that base really sucks for zerg because zergs gets range units uh the slowest right like i guess they get queens but i mean walking a queen across the map takes a couple eras like it takes a very long time i, I was trying to build something from this barracks but i can't <laughs> <laughs> like my marines and reapers are both on the hotkey so i actually cannot build something from that i think i'm actually gonna try to expand here and then we'll just see if i have to lift it away for some reason i can still fly it all the way over here that's fine i do think taking this base in some way makes me feel even more comfortable against cheese and that sounds really weird but the reason why i say that is because the opponent could attack this from the back, but that means that my entire setup is safe, right? Like, if I get cheesed, I think it would be better for them to actually cheese the front base. Oh, it looks like we're gonna... Oh, this is scary. We're gonna be playing... Wait, I'm just gonna make Marauders instead. I was gonna go for Reactor Cyclones, but I think it makes more sense if I go for Marauders right away. So we're gonna get Ravard... Yeah, I, I see that. <laughs> Wait, let me post the emo. I love posting the emo. There we go. I see it. So he's gonna go for a Ravager all in, and I cannot make Marines or Tanks, which is what you would normally would build so i guess we're gonna have to go for the other option which is marauders and cyclones cyclones are pretty decent against this uh but usually you want at least some cover for them because they are very flimsy now i did get my second gas if he wants to this is exactly what i was talking about by the way if he wants to attack this i'm completely fine with it like at some point his best move would probably be to just put one roach there like not even a ravager like literally one roach there to make sure i can't mine from it uh, but if he sends his entire army there then that's just gonna buy me time i'm gonna send a couple extra SCVs so maybe i can get a couple more trips from that gold mineral base before um he denies it permanently no i did see exactly i saw his army at the front i am gonna get slow i'm not gonna get it fast enough i, I think what would be smart for him to do potentially is to actually go for the zergling speed version of this because he might be able to run by after he kills this depot let's see if i can get some damage on the ravager i got some damage so far this is going to be quite annoying to deal with if i can never make a tank like normally you get a tank up at some point and then you can kind of oh i need to dodge the biles all the time it's annoying and then you can kind of zone it out wait i think i killed a ravager guys i'm pretty sure i just heard a ravager die i'm not 100 sure but i think i did another ravager is gonna fall here i feel like defense is looking pretty good so far but i don't want to get overconfident i think maybe i should give up the depot for now because he's gonna get too many ravagers and then uh, maybe i'll just end up losing some scvs which would be annoying now, if I was him, I would just stand there forever and never stop making more Ravagers. Like, he doesn't have to commit because there's no tank, right? Like, the tank is not going to start shelling away at some point. Now, he has... Wait, he's... oh, he's going to take a base. And now, wait, he sent two drones. Was he going to take a gas? I think he might actually be trying to take that gas. So now what he's going to do is probably go to the back of this mineral line. So he has given up on the attack a little bit, looks like. Now, what do I do here, guys? No Marines, no tanks. 
I guess maybe going for Cyclone Mech would be the best logical follow-up from this. I could also go for two star for Banshee. I I'm just gonna wait, he sent his units back. He does have Zerglings. That means it's probably road speed coming up. So I, I still can defend this base. I think there's actually a massive oversight by him, guys, that he's not denying this right now. I'm mining this for free. He, I mean, he chose this map. Like, he really should know that that's, uh, that's a thing that's going to happen on this map, right? I'm going to launch a depot there so I don't stay supplied forever. I guess I'm even going to take that gas. It's honestly pretty genius choice to choose this map because I can't make tanks to defend the backside there. Like, I'm actually going to have to go for, uh, yeah, I guess Banshees or perhaps Batter... Battercruise is also not a bad idea, you know? But I only have three gases. That's the downside of this gold base. It doesn't have that many gases. Now, I'm going to go across the map. I'm going to do what I think he should have done a while ago, which is just to try and deny the mining on the gold. I do think there's something a little sus going on because I saw that he sent a second drone there. So he is going for a lair already. Uh, I kind of think that should be for a Nidus, but I'm not 100% convinced yet. Let's see, I'm going to stop making Marauders now and then just get a second um, factory over on this tech lab. I have enough Marauders to fill this bunker. And now he's not going to be able to mine from this again. I don't see his army, which means it's either on the inside or he's about to attack my gold, uh, you know, at the same time. Which would probably be the smartest move because he actually doesn't have that many drones here. But if he denies my gold at the same time, then, yeah, I guess the economies are just even, right? Oh, I need to make sure I don't, uh, you know, int, <laughs> lose on purpose. <laughs> Obviously, I wouldn't, but lose against those biles, that would be quite painful. Dude, actually, the concussive shells are very nice together with the cyclos, because the lock-on breaks way slower. Look at this. Oh, I didn't manage to pick that up in time. It's a little bit of a mistake by me. He is losing a lot of units here. And make sure to keep microing those cyclones. Gonna pick this one off as well. The concussion shells actually have been very nice, like extremely nice. But I have to say, guys, this game, it doesn't feel super comfortable for me to play, but I think it's been so much more comfortable than it should have been just because he hasn't denied this gold. Like, I should have been on one base economy all this time, but instead I've been on, like, two and a half base economy because that is a freaking gold base, and I'm going to get my third up as well. And I think that oversight is probably going to cost our opponent this game. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if he's going to try to go for a big Ling attack still at some point. Um, let, let me just scan here. So, yeah, okay, he's actually on one base, unless he took another base somewhere. Okay, that looks like a big Ling run by. He's not going to be able to get in here. I'm going to be able to kill all of those Ravagers, I think, because the Zerglings aren't here. I did lose all of my Cyclos at the same time, so that is not the best example of micro by me, but I still think with his economy being so low, me killing those Ravagers is obviously uh, going to be more than good enough of a trade. Going to be able to deny this base. Have you guys ever seen a Marauder drop deny a bit? Wait, I can actually win this fight. If I micro properly, I'm going to be able to win this fight. GG well played is called. And Mozzarella with the oversight of the gold base is going to concede this game. And I think it's a big shame because I actually love this strategy. But I think maybe he was scared of getting caught by the Cyclones or something like that. But really, look at this. Let's, let's go back a little bit, right? My economy here should have been minus this. He has 24 drones, right? His base is perfectly saturated. Six on the gases, 16 on the minerals. And I have, I think, yeah, it's about to be 10 extra gold minerals. And I'm going to get three extra and gas that I should never have had. If you look at the income now, this income is supposed to look even, but it looks like this. 2,000 is 900. So that is unfortunately a big mistake. He wasn't able to make it happen. Still like a strategy. Let's go for the platinum player. Uh, game four is against Dude, a Platinum Terran, someone you also might recognize from the Holdout Challenge. I think he was a grand finalist in that, if I remember correctly. I remember him... Uh I'm pretty sure, he, I know he was a Terran, obviously, but I think he was the guy with the planetary. But I, I feel like I've gotten that wrong before, so it doesn't matter. Uh, but anyway, he vetoed the Marauder and the Cyclone. So I'm, <laughs> I'm really running out of units to build here, guys. I feel like they just kept vetoing what I made in the last game, you know? They're like, okay, he's good with those units. Frick those. Last game, I played Marauder Cyclone only, pretty much. And I guess I had one medevac. Is that every single unit I built? Pretty much. So now, um, I think I'm going to open with Ghost. Now, this is where it gets very scary, because I have so few units available that it should be easier to counter me, right? So the first thought that popped into my mind was that this is a very small map. He picked an extremely small map, and he vetoed early defensive units, so I have to imagine some kind of a cheese is coming. That makes it very scary, because ghosts 
they would be extremely good against Marauders. Like, if he's going to proxy Marauder us or proxy Reaper, I think the Ghost can stop it. Proxy Reaper should be very difficult, but proxy Marauder, definitely the Ghost can stop it. But if it's like a proxy 111, for example, like tanks and, and Vikings or something like that, or maybe even Cyclones, then Ghosts are not going to get the job done. But I can always make a bunker, you know, try to figure my way out of it by going for like a Starport, doing like their Medivac drops or some banshee harassed none of the starport units have been vetoed yet right so i can still make all of them can make battle cruisers or whatever i want really um now should i even hide the ghost academy i don't even know if i should because it's like there's only so many units i can build if he's gonna see the tech lab on this he's already gonna know that it's gonna be ghost because i i can't make anything else from the barracks now let's see is it a cheat okay so he's building uh looks like mass reaper to me here guys mass reapers i'm still allowed to make hellions as well huh I think I should make the factory. Or I should make a second barracks. It's either of those. Yeah, that's going to be Mass Reaper for sure, I think. So I'm, I think I'm going to go for Ghost and Hellions. Oh, just so you guys know, um, Hellions and Hellbats are a different unit for this challenge. Now, I really would not recommend anyone to uh, veto the Hellbat, I guess. But <laughs> I guess if they really want to, they could. Uh, but I guess vetoing the Heli would be a very realistic choice at some point. Because the Hellion is a very good unit. Now, at this point, I already said it, we're ru really running out of units here. So, at some point, maybe they will even veto the Hellbat. I have no idea. Like, I, they, they could make it so that I'm literally out of ground units at some point. Like, so far, I, I have the Thor, the Hellion, the Hellbat, and the Ghost left. That's four. So, by the time we get to the last game, I could be literally out of ground units. Let me get a snipe off. And we are going to snipe the first Reaper. That is a good catch. Uh, probably wasn't expecting the Ghost, judging by that movement. Now, how well is he going to be? You know, if I was him, I wouldn't even think it's a bad idea to go for, like, just make two tech labs on these, get stim. Yeah, you could go for a massive one base all in. Like, I don't really have anything that can stop it properly besides maybe, like, BCs or something. Like, I know that sounds absurd, but BCs could be pretty good against that. Like, they can, you know, they don't really die very fast. You can repair them. Uh, you know, you could kill, like, 10 units with them, then bring it home and repair it. Now, I don't think I want to leave my base because he should have a lot of Reapers. I guess if my Hellion count gets too high... Yeah, maybe I should go... Yeah, actually, that's what I should do. I should go for a Ghost Drop. Because if I go for a Ghost Drop, that's going to give me some opportunities to outplay. Like, maybe snipe some units, pick it back up and stuff. Oh, this is going to be painful. I was ready for that one. Yeah, I think he's being maybe a little bit too tunnel vision. Like, he could see that I have no expansion. He knows that I have a factory and I'm making Ghosts, which means my economy is in the gutter. So maybe he was getting a little bit too desperate with those moves there. I think I've already killed three Reapers, which is really nice. Especially if he's making more Reapers, because that just removes his snowball effect. Now, let's see if I can maybe get on the map and find some of them. Like, if I can catch some of them out here, which would be pretty realistic, I think. Like, obviously, he wants to be posturing his units to do some damage to me, right? Um, then I could maybe catch them very, very early. I could go for Cloak. I do remember in my Ghost of Gem series, making Cloak was actually uh, pretty, pretty freaking strong early on. Like, you can EMP the Orbital and all that good stuff. So I'm going to make Cloak on this Ghost. Uh, I don't know what I want to use my Orbital Energy on. Like, I don't really want to drop a Mule. I think I'm going to go for a Scan. Let's see. Okay, so he is kind of going for that. Yeah, this looks like a plus one. Or maybe he's making that for a turn. That's possible. But it looks like a plus one Stim Combat Shield kind of attack. Um, I could even... Maybe I should go for a Nuke here. I'm going to make one bunker that's going to help me defend against the Marines. And then I'm going to drop all of these ghosts in his base. Hopefully, I don't run into a bunch of Marines with these. That would be very unfortunate. So I'm going to start saturating that base. Our economies look like they're somewhat similar. Unless that is his third command center. I maybe wasn't paying enough attention. I feel like in my memory, I saw some SEVs walk down this ramp. So ooh, that's a lot of freaking Reapers. I think I'm really going to have to go for this one. I don't have Cloak yet. Wait, I could probably do some damage over here. Let's see. We'll do some Micro. Okay, the micro is good. I did lose one of my ghosts, sadly. Let's see. Okay, I don't want to fight against those uh, marines, though. Guess I can just uh, drop them. Okay, here we go. I lost one ghost, and I think I killed, I don't know, seven reapers or something, which is really not bad. You can tell that he has the uh, third against the nukes. Okay, the fact that he's getting up to tanks is also very important, by the way. So he doesn't have the base yet. He does have a really good army. I think it might... I know it sounds dumb, but it might actually be the time for me um, to go for... I'm just going to EMP it. There we go. No mules for you. No scans. Oh, he does have the terror there. That would have been really nice if he didn't. Guess we'll just get some snipes off, and then I'm going to dip. There we go. Now, I think it's time for battlecruisers, guys, because I don't know what else is really going to help me defend this push, to be honest. 
I do have a bunch of Hellions that I could maybe use. Actually, oh wait, there's a good nuke spot there. Um, do I fly something or do I save my money? I think I'm gonna... Yeah, or save my barracks. I think I'm gonna save my barracks. Nukes do finish very fast, that luckily I do know. Um, I could also just drop a nuke in his production. Like, I just kind of want to scare him. I, w I want him to stay at home, pretty much. You know, that's the thing. Wait, can I... Okay, this would be very funny. I think I can barely drop one ghost here without him seeing it. There we go. Okay, oh, that's funny. He's probably going to get so scared. I, and I bet everyone that's watching him, too, is also like, there's a nuke. Please find it. <laughs> you know? Oh, that's great. Okay, so I'm going to be able to make a battle cruiser soon. Oh, no, he's going to lose a lot of marines, I think. Did he pull away in time? Okay, so those marines were barely not in range. I do kill the turret, though. I don't have enough energy for an EMP, sadly, so I can't EMP that orbital. Oh, he scanned, but he kind of missed it. There we go. I'm going to be able to keep that over there. And now I'm going to be able to start a battle cruiser. I'll just keep one ghost in here as well for later. Uh, that's gonna get a nuke at some point let's see is he pushing me he's not pushing me those were just some uh, scouting reapers i suppose i have one more hellion i think i should take a hidden base instead of a regular third because if i take a regular third i have to imagine um that he is going to yeah when he pushes it's just going to be very vulnerable right that's what i'm trying to say maybe i should actually go for the hellbats i'm going to make an armory so there's another nuke in the main i hope for his sake he finds out because that is going to pop the hell off oh he's not finding it guys that's going to kill a third and so many SCVs. let's see how many are going to fall that is 21 kills on that ghost and i'm already making the next nuke as well I, i'm just going to emp that because why the hell not he's not going to have a scan at least from that command center let me just make sure i target as many SCVs as i can like he might actually not have a freaking scan right which would be so painful i'm gonna transfer a bunch of ghosts over already and then i'm gonna get my battle cruisers uh, i do need to be a little cautious because he is going to have um a bigger army than mine like this army looks good but his army is obviously going to be strong wait that third when did that die did i kill that I actually don't remember doing that at all. Okay, it's time for a nuke on the front, guys. Here we go. I, I can tell that he's already going a little crazy because of the nukes. Oh, he's going forward, but I have a lot of units over here. Wait, I can, I can bait him to stay over here. Okay, he's going to try to go for it, but I do have cloak on these. Let's see. I'm going to kill... Oh, I got the tank, but not the raven. Okay, that's unlucky. Good stim by him, though. He's going to be able to chase these down. But now, since the marines are gone, I'm going to be able to kill the tanks with my battlecruiser, most likely. He's going to see those battlecruisers now. I did get all those SCVs walking back to my base, which is a little annoying. And he is going to be able to repair that, so he's not going to die. But this is such a good distraction for me, guys. Like, him coming back home for this is freaking awesome for me. And I have to just think that we have gotten ourselves into a really big winning position. I don't have units left, by the way. Like, don't get me wrong. I actually don't have units left. So, I mean, I think I have... What do I... I have four ghosts and two BCs, which is slightly worse than his army. Or maybe it's actually even at this point. Especially because he's going to bleed out a couple more marines here. And I still have my teleport available. This is what battlecruisers are so good at, by the way. Like, I'm just going to be able to kill, like, 15 marines. And then I can just teleport home. Look at this. This is freaking brutal. He's actually not going to have any marines left at this point. But yeah, I think I might be able to kill all of these. Okay, he does have one upgrade. He does have the Raven as well, which means he could disable my Battlecruiser at some point. Maybe I should get in some upgrades for my Ghost as well. I feel like at this point, I'm just having a great time. I'm, I'm The only thing that I have to be worried about is just like a big fight that happens when I don't want it. But I think if I'm cautious enough, I don't really think it can happen anymore. I killed so many of his... I, wait, does he have a tank left? I feel like I might have killed all of his siege tanks, actually. I, I don't want to be wrong here and walk into a bunch of siege tanks with my ghosts, but I don't think he has any siege tanks left, which means that my ghosts are going to be super efficient on the front now. Let's start getting some upgrades for these. I didn't actually get to use that armor, by the way. I guess I'll use it for, to get an air upgrade here. And then I'm just going to drop down and nuke at the front. Actually, the covering the ramp is really nice. I can snipe all of these marines. Look at this. He's going to lose so many marines instantly to these snipes. Oh, this is beautiful. And the battlecruiser is going to come to. The nuke might even, uh, you know, finish things off here. GG has to be called and there we go we go up 3-1 and I feel like most of this really had to do with that early game, guys. Like, he went for all the Reapers. It was a good strategy, but he just bled the Reapers a little bit too much. And honestly, he should have gone for a proxy. Like, if he went for the proxy, the Reapers would have arrived before a Ghost. But now the Reaper literally arrived as the Ghost finished, and I got the instant snipe. It was a good strategy, but maybe the timing should have been checked a little bit better in a custom game. So he would have known to proxy the barracks and go for a full all-in instead. Still a good strategy, good map choice as well. But now they have to win every single game to win this best of seven. Wish them luck. I was going to say wish me luck, but they need the luck for once.
Game number five is against Freco, a gold Protoss, and he vetoed Widow Mines and Liberators, which I thought was a very surprising change. I was pretty sure Liberator would find uh, itself all the way through the end. I, I, I predicted that the end units would be... I think it was three of them. So I thought it was going to be Liberators, Medivacs, and Ravens. I thought the Banshees, Battlecruisers would get vetoed Thors as well. Oh, and the Hellbats, I think. It should be four units, right? I'm pretty sure the Hellbats would stay. Uh, but he's going to veto the Widow Mine, which is obviously a good veto. And he's going to veto the Liberator. Now, what I'm a little scared of for him is that he hasn't vetoed the Ghost. And the Ghost is kind of the last all-round unit there is, really, right? I mean, you, you could say that uh, a battlecruiser is an all-round unit but it, you can build it so freaking late that it's not really anymore right because it doesn't do anything in the early game but i really thought that what i wanted to make sure of is to get rid of all the all-around units so then their cheeses and whatever they want to do are way more effective so i would have definitely vetoed the ghost instead of the liberator um the hardest choice would have been to veto the hellion or the widow mine because they're they're both pretty sick, right? Like, I, I I could still do Widowmine drops until this game. And if you look at Reddit, for example, where people hate Widowmine drops more than anything else, that sounds pretty crazy. I think it makes sense because in the end, it's, it's just a Widowmine drop, right? But I could do Widowmine drops until the last game. And I didn't do any of them. That's how honorable I am here, guys. Now, like I said, they do have to win every single game to win the series. But even if they don't, all the winners, all the map winners will still get 50 bucks. So far, only Yoru has managed to get the 50 bucks. And if they all want to get 100, then they will have to start popping off now. I guess I'll just put the Ghost Academy in the wall. I, I was almost automatically going to make a Reaper. I mean, I can't because I unhold kit it, but I was very close to pressing the Reaper button, but my brain corrected itself in time. Now, maybe I could go for a little bit of a faster Cloak Rush this time, or I could go for some Hellion drops, maybe. Like, I so we're playing against the Protoss. Last game was against a Terran. Terran kind of has some... Yeah, some different threats to ghost openers than Protoss does. Like, against Protoss, is mostly very scary to play against Stalkers and against late game units. Like, Disruptors and Colossi are so good against ghosts. Like, it's crazy. Um, and Stalkers in the early game. So, I would hope my opponent goes for like a one base blink all in. I think that would probably be the best strategy that he can go for. He did make a Zealot already, which I will be able to kill with my ghost. Now, I think I'm going to get Cloak right away because that might help me survive against something cheeky like that. Oh, he actually went for the surround there. Didn't expect that one. He almost got me with it too. Now, I haven't seen any tech yet. He's probably going to make either tech here or he's going to wait for my SCV to die or he's going to proxy it. Those are all options. I do actually like that he went for the SCV kill there. It's very uncommon, but if he would have gotten it, I would have actually had no scouting because I can't make a Reaper. And there is another gateway. Okay, he's chrono boosting the warp gate. That's already a pretty good tell as well. So it looks like he's going to go for a big attack. I do want to make a command center. But after this, I think I have to go for a bunker. If he uh, used that range unit to kill this SCV, it should, be arrived. It should have arrived already, actually. Okay, so... That could either be the second Stalker, or maybe he just, I don't know, checked his natural first or whatever. Not quite sure what he was doing with that. Now, I have two choices here, guys. I, like I said, I don't have anything that's good against Stalkers. So, I could either defend with a lot of bunkers, or I could go across with these three and try to get in his main base with Cloak. I feel like that could be a pretty brutal, uh, you know, cheese as well. Definitely something I've won with before. But he should be expecting it. Like I said, they were all streaming to each other. So he must know. I even told him in the lobby, beware of ghosts. I really thought after the last game, he was going to veto ghosts, to be honest, but he didn't. So here we are. I'm still going to be allowed to make these bad boys. Now, should I go straight to the middle? Probably not. Oh, well, I guess. Well, now I'm spotted anyway. I'm going to make sure to kill that. He was sending it over here. Yeah, exactly. Okay, that is nice. He was sending it over there. So I figured that there was going to be a proxy there. This is a really good strategy, by the way. Like, actually fantastic for him. I'm getting excited for him, but I don't want to get too excited already because, you know, things might still happen. But I don't really have units that are good against this stuff. Like, I can EMP everything. That is true. I'm just going to get an EMP off right away. Uh, let's see. Oh, I don't actually have another EMP. I think I need my SCVs over here. I have my two SCVs on the counter. Good micro by him so far to get in the base that fast, but he is going to be trapped now. My ghosts are about to enter his base. I can probably put these in the bunker so they don't die. I'm actually going to lower that so I can surround his units. Here we go. So now my ghosts are into his main base. I'm going to do one more EMP. The SCVs are doing a really good job. He's going to be losing all of those probes pretty much, but he's going to be so close. Can I kill the Observer? I guess I can't because I don't really have any um, 
I don't even have cloak, so it doesn't really matter. So he's probably going to kill this quite fast. I need to kill that immortal. That immortal is target number one. He is going to lose every single probe at home. Okay, this, I think this is going to be a really close one, to be honest. This is going to be a super, super close finish. I think the immortal is going to die in time. So you would think the bunker is not going to die, but I don't have money for the repair. He could be repairing this right now. I guess I'll just go for a quick EMP on those stalkers. He could be killing the bunker. That bunker does fall. He has enough stalkers left. I think it might be a good move for me to kill the observer now. Where is it? I don't actually see the observer. I guess I kind of lost track of it at some point. I'm going to uncloak these. I can... Oh, that's actually super nice. Wait, no? I could make... Yeah, I can make one more ghost. Okay, exactly. There we go. I'm going to make one more ghost. I have one SEV. Um... I'm gonna lift the... I can't really lift both of them up. I think he has one observer and that's it. If I kill the observer, there's gonna be a really small chance that I'm gonna be able to get this done. If I can't kill the observer and his entire army at the same time, he made one more stalker instead of another observer. That is kind of a crazy choice. Now he's camping that very well. Let's see. I'm gonna snipe the observer here, guys. The observer is gonna fall pretty fast. I do kill the observer. There we go. I'm gonna get a nice EMP on the stalkers as well. He's gonna have to run them through. But if I get a good wall, I didn't quite get a good wall. It's so close. I don't know. Maybe he had money to make another probe. Maybe he didn't. I'm gonna be able to kill another stalker here too. He's probably he's running towards the robot, which makes me think that he was making another observer. Let's see. I'm gonna be able to kill that. Does he have more? He does have another observer, but I can kill it again. I'm gonna kill the observer one more time, and that is my final chance here guys i do think he has probes i have to chase these stalkers because all i can do is wait for my one meal i'm running out of energy as well here we go i'm gonna kill one more stalker he should have two stalkers left judging by how many stalkers he warped in i feel like he should have at least another probe i'm gonna run into the grass let's see he's gonna be able to kill these i he, i know he has one more pro okay this this fight is pretty epic here he is gonna kill my final ghost and that is going to be it he had three probes left he was gonna out my me and he gets another dub on the board for the boys and that is awesome honestly once again just a really good strat I, I get so excited when i see this it's such a good strategy like this is a gold league protos he knew that going to the macro games with mass stalkers against my harassment wasn't gonna work he goes for the robo proxy which i don't really have a counter for i could have made even more bunkers but i didn't have money to repair i didn't have damage outside of the emp and this was fantastic and that does mean that my 700 dollars are still at risk let's go for the silver player all right, the second to last game is going to be against Moosen around a Silver Terran. And his vetoes were the Hellion and the Banshee. Now, initially he wrote that he was going to veto the Hellion and the Ghost, but he changed his mind, which did make me feel a little bit suspicious. Like, the last guy beat me by making, yeah, basically non-light units, right? And just attacking me against my Ghost, and my Ghost didn't do any damage, because Ghosts only really deal damage against light targets. So I have to imagine there's either a Cyclone or a Tank call in coming. Now, I'm, I'm actually going to do something very crazy here. This could be the best decision I've made in this entire video or the worst. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play Command Center first. And Command Center first, you can't really play against Terran. But the other day, someone did this against me, playing Nexus first against my Protoss. And I realized that you can actually wall everything off. Like, this should wall the Reaper Cliff. If it doesn't, I'm screwed. But I'm pretty sure it does. And then you can block this with three buildings. So I can go for, let's say, Barracks, Factory, and then an Engineering Bay. Which I normally wouldn't build, but now I can actually use for the defense. Because I don't really have... Like, what units can I even build? I can make Ghosts and... Thors and Hellbats and some Starport units, right? Now, that is what my plan is as well. I'm going to go for Vikings, I think. I'm going to go for CC first. That's going to give me a lot of minerals so I can make mineral expensive units such as Vikings. Normally, Vikings are... It's just, you can't really go for multiple Starports. Like, this is a big mistake people usually make playing against Protoss. They see a Colossus, they make a second Starport with a reactor. And then they have two Starports with the reactors making Vikings, which, if you don't want to do the math, costs 600 minerals per round. So you cannot really afford that very easily at all. But if I go for Command Center first, with uh, a Reaper defense kind of built into the map a little bit here, if I use it right, maybe I can get a lot of Vikings out. Like, Reapers and Hellions or whatever they send in the early game are not going to kill walls. Now, this would be a really bad strategy if we're getting proxied right now. But what I... Oh, this actually... Oh, no. That's a lot of barracks. Oh, we are actually kind of getting proxied here. Okay, that is scary. I think I miscalculated this one a little bit. So, what I thought was that I could... I think I actually have to make ghosts now, right? Yeah, I have to make freaking ghosts. 
do i want to make ghost i don't think i really do but i am gonna get the wall off here so we actually it, I, I don't think this is walled off right i think there needs to be another depot here or something yeah there needs to be a depot there which i'm gonna make before my orbitals because i'm crazy but what my thought process was um was that since the other guy the platinum player tried to rush me with reapers against my ghost we would probably not get proxied but instead it would be a later attack that's what my plan was so now we're going cc first into ghost into mass reapers and i just have to freaking pray that my wall off or my freaking depot here holds up by the way because if it doesn't reapers are gonna flood it and we're gonna be in a massive amount of trouble now even now i'm gonna get my ghost so late that he could overpower my bunker actually and a really oh i didn't actually think about this guys another really cool strategy would be if he launched two... Can he jump up here, actually? Wait, I'm, I don't think he can jump up there. He needs to mine these minerals first. So he has to mine these minerals with SCVs and then mine these ones, and then he can run into my base. That would actually be a freaking S-tier play. Like, I would love that so much. But for now, I I think we're okay. I think our freaking CC first into Ghost build with the fast wall off in both places. There's another place. Oh, no, I didn't realize that. Oh, he could have canceled that snipe, but he didn't. He's going to run into the main. Needs to be careful with that. If he keeps at least one Reaper alive, that would be pretty good for him. He does keep one Reaper alive. So there's another jump off spot there. I completely missed that for some reason. Um... I guess I'll just build a factory to block it. Let me kill that. Okay, we didn't actually lose SCVs, which is nice. So I'm going to go for a factory right here. Um, and then we should be able to keep ourselves safe for a while. Now, I can't really make anything from that factory. I still want to go for Vikings because I just feel like Vikings are going to be the best thing I can build against, like, you know, the air control with tank push kind of thing. Vikings can also fly into my opponent's uh, base if I want to go for, like, a counterattack. So that does look like the best idea. I didn't get cloak. Okay, I, for some reason I thought I got cloak, but I didn't, so then I can't move across the map. I feel like 10 Reapers, if I don't have a medevac, will probably own these ghosts pretty... I mean, if I kill all of them and lose my ghost, then, it, then it's an okay trade, right? Let's see, did he take an expansion yet? He didn't take an expansion. He is... No, he is still producing. Okay, for a second I thought those barracks weren't building anything. So he probably has a million Reapers just chilling somewhere. If he's going to go for the mine out on that, I would be very proud of him. That, then I know he truly is a Mark viewer. If he's mining this out or he's going to try to mine it out at some point, then I know that he's a real viewer, you know? Because <laughs> who wouldn't do that that watches my channel, right? So I'm just going to sit here with my ghost. I'm even going to abandon the bunker for a bit. Now, I do have to go for my double starport um, because, I don't know, he could have, like, proxied a factory or anything like that already, right? Now, I don't think I can make anything from this factory. Well, I can make a Thor and a Hellbat. Uh, do I need either of these? I don't think so. I feel like that would both be a little bit of a money sink. Now, if his Reapers are out here, maybe I can get them with the snipe. Let's see. I know his Reapers are probably around here somewhere. If I can find them, that would be freaking massive. If he did pull them back, then that's uh, good for him. Otherwise, he would have been in a little bit of pain. I'm going to go for a third starport, actually. I'm going to do one more scale. Okay, that's... Oh, uh, yeah, that's even more than I thought. Okay. Maybe I should make another bunker, you know? It's actually not that crazy. Wait, he has the Reapers... Oh, wait! He could go for the scan. He's actually going to go for the scan. That is very cool. But my ghosts are already here. I'm going to be able to snipe the Reapers. And he's going to have to fall back. I saw it just in time. If he did that just a little bit faster. Like if he scanned instantly. I think he would have been able to break it and get in. If he would have won then. I don't know. But sadly for him. I saw it just in time before he was. Or I realized just in time that he was going to go for that. I moved my units over. And was able to snipe a couple of Reapers. And I think he's still on one base guys. I feel like he might have chosen the wrong strategy here. Two of them try to go mass reapers against me just being able to make ghosts and i think twice it hasn't worked out i'm gonna do one more scan he is still clearly making mass reapers i'm still gonna go for the vikings because the vikings are gonna allow me to kill his uh his entire mineral line pretty much like if i ever get a counter attack going that's gonna be really good and now i do know that this works by the way so that's nice so one depot blocks that entire thing i think on this map you could actually play like i know i'm thinking very far ahead doesn't even have to do anything with this game but you could probably play nexus first against Terran on this map if you just wall this off in time that is cool I don't think you've been able to play nexus first as protos against Terran in, in forever or cc first in tbt maybe even because barracks factory bunker that sounds pretty good i'm just gonna keep scanning he is making a command center now okay so judging by the placement of that he's being sneaky maybe he was sneaky before though he does have a lot of barracks it's one thing it's it's very hard for me to judge how far ahead or behind i should be when my builds have to be this scuffed like keep in mind i had to make a extra depot and a ghost academy 
before my orbitals, right? Like, I didn't even make an orbital freaking command, so that's obviously not good for my economy. Now, I'm gonna get a lot of ghosts out. I, I feel like there's, like, 20 Reapers waiting somewhere. I don't think it's too crazy of a number. I do think it's still at the number where I don't really want to move out, though. Since there, I'm also guessing that these are still making Reapers, and the reason why I say that um, is because the units didn't pop out when my Vikings arrived, so there's just a bigger chance it's a unit that takes a long time to make, such as uh, the Reaper, right? So I killed pretty much every single SUV. He doesn't have the base there. I think he has to go for a desperate attack now, but with the Viking shielding for my Ghost, I don't really know if he can still, uh, you know, kill me at all. Let's see. He's going to try one more time. He brought SUVs here. Wait, I think he was trying to SUV pull me, but uh, since it's a while, all his uh, units kind of derped and went that way. Now, with these amount of ghosts, I feel pretty confident I can go out on the map and challenge him. Let me just put them in the back so damage doesn't cancel these snipes. Let's see. Is he still here? He's trying to expand over here because I'm killing his entire base, but I think I just have too many ghosts. I'm just going to be spamming those snipes like crazy. Everything is pretty much gone and we have beaten him. There we go. The best of seven goes our way. 4-2 which means that they don't win today. They're not going to win 700 bucks, but the bronze player still has a chance to win 50 bucks. Yoru and Freko already won the 50. The last game is going to be very fun because the bronze player is going to get three vetoes. I'll barely have anything to make. Let's go for the final game. The final game of the day is against 50-year-old, a bronze league Zerg player, and the vetoes were... Ghosts, finally, Vikings, and Thors, I believe. So I have Hellbats, Medivacs, Ravens and battle cruisers. So I think what I'm gonna do is probably just go for a fast wall off and then either go mass ravens or mass BCs. I mean, that sounds about right. I cannot make the ghost anymore to say save in the early game. Now, I do wanna say I know I've won the best of seven, but what I love about this so much is that it really looked like it could have gone either way, right? Like if the last guy did that cheese while vetoing ghosts instead of banshees, for example, uh, it already would have made a big difference. If the platinum player did a different cheese with maybe a tank push, that also could have made a really big difference. Like I definitely think I could have been 2-4 by now, or maybe even 1-5, like it really could go either way. Definitely pretty excited to do this uh, again, but with Protoss and Zerg, because this has been a lot of fun. Like this has been an amazing day for me. Now, I guess I'll just go for a barracks. Uh, I, w I was going to go for CC first, but it might make more sense for me to just play extra safe. Now, I'm going to scout. I have to imagine that a bronze player doesn't necessarily um, have a... <laughs> How do I put this nicely? A logical build order, I guess. So I don't want to like go super hard on what I'm scouting, but if I see like a Roach Warren and two gases being built at some point, then I can already tell what's going to happen, right? I might actually have to go for like a planetary on the natural or something. Like I, I can make Hellbats. Are Hellbats going to stop a bunch of Roaches? They could, like Hellbats and Medivacs. They could probably stop like a big roach attack, but I'm not 100% convinced. Um, let's just see what is going on here. So there's no expansion yet. A roach warren is already going up. Uh, oh man, yeah, what am I gonna do now, guys? This this is pretty scary. I think I actually have to go for the freaky planetary in the wall. Uh, this is this is this is fun. <laughs> this is actually this is gonna be so stupid. So what is the first unit I can build? A hellbat. Do I want to make a hellbat? Not really. Um, yeah. I, God, this is harder than I thought it would be. Like, what do I even build? Do, like, Ravens are not going to help. Medivacs are not really going to help. I think I actually have to go for the freaking Battlecruiser. Wait, why is the Zergling going there? Is he, is he scouting the edge of the map for a hidden base? This is this is not a bronze. This is a freaking top Grandmaster. Who even scouts like that? That's crazy. All right, I guess we'll check if he's going to come. His build does actually look pretty tight, to be honest. Like, his build looks a lot better than I would have expected. Let's see. He's making three Ravagers already. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess we're just going to hope that I get this. Pl this planet there is my only hope, by the way. Like, I don't... Well, I, I can start... Maybe I should actually start making Hellbats. I know it sounds really stupid, but I... Let's see. Do I have enough gas? I don't think I have enough gas for the armory. Oh, that's painful. I actually don't have enough gas for the armory here, guys, I think. Okay, let's see. I'm just going to start morphing this planetary. I'll put a couple SUVs here so I can repair it. And I'm just going to... No, actually, I'll make that after the planetary, of course. Oh, oh, dude, I forgot the armory is 50 gas cheaper in this patch. Maybe I could have actually afforded... Okay, that actually sucks a little bit. So the planetary is going to go up. Let's see. He's going to start biling that supply depot, of course. I'm going to make a little bit of a wall already. I think I'm going to pull more SUVs in case he's going to try to run by. 
Let's see how he's going to use this Ravagers exactly. He's biling my SCVs. He does really want to be biling that engineering bay instead. That is for sure. Going to pull a couple more SCVs. I mean, as soon as the planetary finishes, we're going to be good. Uh, he's going to run away. He probably could have done a little more damage there, but our planetary is going to get up. And Wait, did he bile his own overlord? I... I didn't hit that, did I? What did I hit that with? My planetary? <laughs> did he actually... Wait, okay, I could build a turret. I know this sounds really dumb. I could build a turret under that. Should I do it? I'm, I'm gonna build a turret here. Let's go. It's gonna help me wall off a little bit. Maybe I can just use this barracks to keep scouting what is going on there. If, if I could kill the overlord with the turret, that would actually be pretty freaking epic. All right, so I'm gonna repair this eBay just to buy a little bit of time. Like, it's just giving him a target. Uh, yeah, I think it's fine if I just go for the repair here. Keep in mind... They said, yeah, I'm going to kill him with the turret. Let's go. Keep in mind that I do have two command centers. Like, it doesn't feel like it because I don't have an expansion. But I do have two command centers, which means I can make more SCVs. So this planet there is looking very solid. I can make a battle cruiser very soon. Like, not quite yet, but very soon. This planet there, if he tries to run by, it's going to hurt like crazy, by the way. Like, this, the planet there is actually going to hurt like hell. I don't, he, I don't think he can kill it. He can only run past it. Like, I, I really don't think he would ever be able to kill that. Now, I could drop a depot. I don't think I want to drop it yet, though. Because if I drop the depot uh, and I lose a lot of these SCVs, then it was just wasted, right? I think we're going to drop a mule instead. Okay, so he's going to go... How does he have that much gas? He just made four more Ravagers. Oh, my God. This is already gets scary. I mean, I still don't think he's going to break this, to be honest. Like, planetaries are insanely strong. And he's running out of time, guys. He needs to... Co if he ran past this now, I might even favor him. If he runs past this, he kills the starport. I don't think there's really anything I can do against him. But he's taking a little bit too much time. The battlecruiser is going to finish. And this battlecruiser, I think, is going to effectively end this game. Now, I was missing one on the repair here. Let's see, he's still just binding the planetary. The repair is costing a lot of gas. So I'm not going to get a second battlecruiser out. But I don't really think it's going to matter. I think he didn't, uh, or he wasn't courageous enough, I should say, to run past the planetary. And that's what he should have won to win this game. Because now this battlecruiser is going to end it. And I have to say, guys, this is another one of those games. I know I'm going to win this game. Now, this is another one of those games that was really close. If he did decide to run past the planetary fortress, I think he actually would have won the game. But now this battlecruiser, there, there's absolutely nothing he can do against it, I think. I'm going to be making a second one as well. I even have my SCVs ready to block the Ravagers if he's going to try to go for a run by. He's going to try it in, in the end. But I'm going to be blocking those with my SCVs. Look at that. He's going to lose a couple more uh, but I don't think it really matters what happens in this battle anymore my second BC is on the way I don't think he has a drone left unless he decided to not make this hatchery and even though I want to say I really think he did a good job of executing the build. He picked a really good strategy. I think this planetary was the only thing that could have won me this game. You know what, what I think, guys? If he went for a version where he made a couple of links more early on, I think then he actually stops this command center from being built, and it's a different game entirely, right? But now this planetary got up, and it is going to be able to defend my honor, and I will not lose to a bronze player today. Well, I say that like I've never lost oh, there's no GG. Okay, that's that's a little vicious. <laughs> no, he probably just I don't know, he probably just left the game. Who knows? Maybe he doesn't even know that you're supposed to type GG. Well, all right, guys. We managed to do it 5-2 in our favor against every rank. And this was a really awesome challenge. And like I said, I really think all these games could have gone a different way. I feel like I could have lost this 6-1. I could have won probably even 7-0. Well, the first guy did only really, really hard. So maybe not 7-0. Maybe I could have won 6-1 as well. But this was freaking awesome. Sadly, they do not get a hundred dollars but freko and yoru do win the 50 so congrats to them once again if you guys want to play this make sure to join the discord because that's where i get the players from for the next challenge for now if you enjoyed it give the video a like subscribe to the channel and I'll see y'all for the next one adios